This is NDDC Today. Nice you can join us. Well, I'm doing something very rare in Nigeria right now, being able to move around. Millions of people are locked up in their homes. They can't move because of COVID-19, as you all know. And that's only COVID-19. What happens when COVID-20 comes along? In any case, the NDDC is not waiting for that. It's putting measures in place to help the nine different states of the Niger Delta to cope with the epidemic. How is it doing this? The NDDC is voting large sums of money to set up isolation centers, to buy drugs, and to help the different state governments to contain this epidemic. All that in today's program. And also, we'll be look, taking a look again at the verification exercise being carried out by the NDDC to ensure that those who got contracts, that those contracts have been well executed and, you know, the NDDC is ready to pay for them. So, how have those countries fared? What was the tour like? Stay with us. As you well know by now, the acting MD is a virologist, so he knows a lot about the pandemic, not only this, about others as well. And he also knows the seriousness by which this pandemic should be tackled. So he's not wasting time at all, he's committing some resources from the NDDC to help all the nine states of the Niger Delta. In this interview, we see his thoughts on how he's going to go about it. Not only that, if you know that the NDDC has also resolved to pay up all the scholarships abroad, the students who have gone out under this NDDC foreign scholarship scheme, they are being settled as I speak. we we'll get details of that as well. Plus, the fact that the headquarters of the NDDC will soon be open to the Commission. The Acting Managing Director of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, Professor Keme Bradikumo Ponde, recently granted a press interview in Potakot, where he spoke on a wide range of issues about the Commission, as well as gave assurances that the NDDC would continue its strides to better the lots of the people of the Niger Delta region. One of the issues that was of great concern to Professor Ponde is the recent coronavirus pandemic, otherwise known as COVID-19, ravaging the world. The NDDC boss assured that the Commission will intervene to protect the people of the Niger Delta region from this dreaded disease. Professor Ponde said that the NDDC would collaborate with other stakeholders, including state governments in the region, to fight the disease. The NDDC has um, started making plans um, to um, intervene in uh, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we have um, started uh, looking at the different isolation uh, points in the nine states of the NDDC. We're interacting with them to find out what is on ground. The NDDC chief executive officer observed that the treatment of the disease was not limited to drugs, but included the ability to make sure that the patients were able to breathe properly, and this should be done using ventilators and revealed that the NDDC was doing everything possible to ensure that it acquired more ventilators and oxygen to healthcare facilities in the Niger Delta, vital requirements for the treatment of the disease. We are also taking stock of um, the ventilators and um, oxygen and I mean, to see if they have the capacity or they have um, these um, in stock because um, when people come down with uh, um, COVID-19 uh, infection that requires um, hospitalization. The mainstay of treatment includes um, not limited to just the drugs but uh, the ability to make sure that the patient is able to breathe properly and this will be done using ventilators. The NDDC boss further revealed that the Commission was looking at contributing in the area of treatment because most of the activities so far carried out had been on prevention, social distancing and hand washing as well as using sanitizers. 
He remarked that the commission was also looking at the drugs that have been used so far in other climes for the treatment of the disease, stating that there were some antiviral drugs that the NDDC were trying to make available in a proactive manner. He emphasized that the NDDC was going a step above what others had been doing. There are some uh, antiviral drugs, um, Remdesivir um, and others. Um, we're trying to see the availability of uh, these drugs. We're trying to be proactive. So the NDDC is um, going a step above what others are doing. As for testing, Professor Ponde said that the NDDC was leaving that for the Nigeria Center for Disease and Control, NCDC, which is coordinating the exercise across the country. As a professor of virology and one who is eminently qualified to know, Ponde revealed that most of its kits that were being used are not efficient and cannot detect COVID-19. According to him, Everybody has one way or another been exposed to coronavirus and those kits just test for antibodies that already exist in most of us. So we have to be very careful as per um, the kits and um, our purchase of kits. So the NDDC has tried to distance itself from that and depend on the NCDC for appropriate uh, testing. Ponde affirmed that the NDDC would identify the isolation centers in the United Delta states so as to assist in strengthening them and building their capacity for service delivery. That's what, what we are trying to find out, how many isolation centers are available, how many ICUs are available in the United States so that um, we could coordinate, we could assist them in the form of a, uh, some form of intervention to strengthen their capacity and strengthen their healthcare delivery at these critical points. Professor Ponde stressed the need for people to imbibe simple health tips like social distancing, good coughing etiquette and regular hand washing with soap and water. He advised that hand washing techniques be taught on radio and television. Washing with soap is very very important and the real hand washing technique most people do not know. And I think those are the things that uh, they should be uh, taught social media, on TV and everywhere. The proper hand washing techniques. Speaking on the free medical program of the NDDC, the acting NDDC MD said that the Commission's 2019 budget made provisions for its resuscitation, stating that the Directorate of the Health, Education and Social Services EHSS, of the NDDC is already working on a template for it. He revealed that the Commission was looking for people that will partner with it in the program. He said the Commission was also planning to roll out a monthly program that will run across the nine states of the region. According to him, the plan is to have three in every state under the NDDC mandate states in a month at the same time. It will be done monthly across all the nine states in each of the senatorial districts. So our plan is to have like three in a state in a month and in all the states at the same time. And uh, we believe that that will reduce the disease burden, that especially in the hard to reach areas of uh, the Niger Delta region. On the Commission's Foreign Postgraduate Scholarship Scheme, Professor Ponde reiterated the determination of the NDDC to meet all its obligations to beneficiaries of the scheme, stressing that the Commission had no intention of abandoning any of its scholars in the United Kingdom or in Canada. The NDDC Chief Executive Officer remarked that all those that were awarded scholarships by the Commission will be taken care of, noting that the NDDC was obliged to meeting all the terms of the scholarship. I believe that um, if the NDDC has given anybody a scholarship, the NDDC is obliged to meet all uh, the terms of that uh, scholarship. We cannot send people out of the country and not pay them, not pay their fees. Professor Ponde further explained that once the outstanding fees for the students were settled, new beneficiaries would be considered for the program, observing that it was not proper to embark on fresh awards while there were still outstandings to be paid for the current scholars.
He said, however, that this did not amount to NDDC suspending the program. Once we're able to sort out all those that were owing, then we can now think of subsequent uh, people who can enter the program. But until we clear that backlog of debts, I don't think it's proper to, to embark on one, not that uh, we're suspending. The NDDC boss stressed that beyond the physical infrastructure provided by the NDDC to improve the living conditions of the people of the Niger Delta region, the Commission must not neglect human capital development, which he said would ensure sustainable livelihood to the Niger Deltans. He noted that the gains of the program may not be calculated directly, but that everybody who has gone and brought back to the country even a little change would have made an impact. He said that the program should be encouraged while we tone down on the ones that have been abused, especially the emergency projects. It's been a tradition, it's been one of the successes. We might not be able to calculate the gains of that uh, program directly, but everybody who has gone and brought, come back to this country and has brought back even a little change will have made an impact. Ponde recently pledged to collaborate with other stakeholders in the fight against the disease. He stated that the NDDC will contribute in the area of treatment, explore avenues for intervening in providing ventilators, and facilitate the procurement of oxygen. Also, to look at the drugs that have been used so far in other crimes for the treatment, and to fast track the establishment of isolation centers in the 27 senatorial districts across the Niger Delta region. In this guise, the NDDC is providing a whopping 775 million to support the states to fight this COVID-19 and also 275 million to set up the isolation centers. The NDDC repositioning to perform better. The change agents are in place. The task has begun, reassessing priorities. The Niger Delta region can develop at a different pace from the rest of Nigeria. We don't need to and develop and celebrate. We must do what is right. Whatever has been done wrong, we must correct it from here. The president insists that every penny spent on any project in the Niger Delta must be well accounted for. Identifying no-go areas. Every program that's been on, I think, should be encouraged whilst we tone down on all the programs that have been abused and has given the MDDC a, a bad name, especially emergency projects which were abused in a very, very bad way. Setting the standards. The Commission must prioritize some signature projects in each state of the United States of Niger Delta. Not only projects, we also have to empower our people. Agriculture, if you check today in Niger Delta, we have left agriculture behind. The support is coming from everywhere. We hope that we will, in the best interest of the people of the Niger Delta, continue to work collaboratively with the membership of the board of the NDDC in the best interest of all. Let it be that at the end of whatever period we spend here, that we were able to say that there's been a change in the Niger Delta. The NDDC, repositioning to perform better. So the 20 million Niger Daltons should now rest assured that the NDDC is doing its best to make sure that this pandemic is controlled within the nine states of the Niger Delta. A heartwarming thought. Now, COVID or no COVID, the executive director of projects is going around inspecting the project for which money has been demanded. Projects in Imo rivers and delta states were inspected over this period and the EDP was quite satisfied with his team's assessment. The acting executive director projects of the NDDC, Dr. Cairo Ojubo, and his technical team have stepped up inspections of completed projects across the Niger Delta region in order to ascertain the veracity of claims by contractors that the projects have been completed and are ready for payment. The team recently visited some states in continuation of the on-the-spot assessment and also injected the new NDDC spirit to fast-track the completion of ongoing projects. 
The projects visited by the Niger Delta technical team are in Delta, Rivers and Imo states. In Delta state, the visit started in Burutu local government area with the inspection of the 14.8 km ongoing Ojobo Tamigbe Bomadi Tuomo Road project, which is about 63% complete. Here, the team used the newly acquired asphalt concrete coring machine of the Commission to bore holes on some already asphalted sections of the road to determine the thickness of the asphalt on the road and basically verify that the quality of work done meets the approved specification of the NDDC. After the tests were concluded, the engineers were convinced that the quality of asphalt laid on the road was satisfactory. The Acting Executive Director Projects, Dr. Cairo Ujubo, while describing this road as a legacy project that can improve the quality of lives of the people of the region, assured that the Niger Delta Development Commission will always pay more attention to projects such as this. This is a sort of a, a regional project that the NDCC should uh, concentrate on. And uh, from what we have seen, the quality of road is uh, encouraging. Um, we want our local contractors to emulate uh, this standard of uh, work. You have seen that uh, now the NDDC is a new NDDC. It's no longer the NDDC of old. Uh, we're able to now call the asphalt to know that uh, the, the thickness is according to specification. The acting EDP also noted that the multi-billion Naira Ojobo Tamigbe Pomadi Tuomo Road contract was grossly overvalued and that the Commission will work out the correct and appropriate pricing and meet with the contractor on how to address the issue going forward. The only problem we have now is, the, is that this contract is obvious that it is uh, uh, grossly overvalued. So our quantity surveyors and our team of engineers will now go in to see how we can uh, get to the correct and appropriate pricing and then we will now talk with the contractors on how to address the issue. The contractor handling the project identified factors such as the request by the host communities to include features not in the original design of the project, kidnapping of their staff and compensation issues as some of the challenges that have slowed down the progress of work on the road. The day that we finish the backfill, the community come arrest 14 of our workers. Beat them, we send them even to the hospital. We send the PRO, oh. our courage officer there, to show them up. They cage him. Then we send the very skilled the captain of the GTF force to go back to negotiate. And he was able to retrieve our workers in the PRO. What is their problem? Their problem, they are, co they are claiming they did not receive compensation. Still in Delta State, the executive director project and his team inspected the completed Ezembiri Road and the Korobarizi Road. The technical team observed that the culvert and drainage work done at one of the junctions did not meet stipulated standards and instructed the contractor to return to site and remedy the situation in the area. Next was the turn of Bomadi local government area where the EDP and his team inspected the modern motor park constructed with shops and toilets at Esenaibe community. This project is another NDDC initiative designed to provide an organized parking area with lock-up shops for commercial drivers and traders in the Bomadi oversight area of the community. Construction of the modern motor park with shops is complete and now in use. The inspection team was also in Abigborodo community in Wari North local government area to observe and assess the reclamation, sand filling and shore protection work carried out by the NDDC to provide more land for the people of Abigborodo. In Uheli North, the inspection team visited the Government College Uheli to ascertain the quality and standard of work carried out on the internal roads of the school executed by the NDDC contractors. The technical team was satisfied with the quality of work done here. Before departing Uheli North, the team stopped over at Okeare Orupopo to inspect the road project going on there. 
From Delta State, it was a turn of River State. And here, the EDP and his inspection team also visited some project sites to determine if the projects met the approved standards to qualify for payment. One of the road projects visited for inspection by the technical team is the Harmony Estate Internal Road in Rumukurushi in Upiakpo local government area. The NDDC team was received by leaders and members of the Harmony Estate Residents Association who expressed their gratitude to the Commission for the various projects they have brought to their community. It is a very good link road and it came at a time and it was mostly needed. This east-west road was so bad, here became the main access where people are passing from Expressway, Expressway east-west road, connecting to Igrita road, Aba road, connecting to Arudi Rumudara road. So, so, so grateful and happy. While appreciating the gratitude of the community, the NDDC team emphasized the need for proper maintenance of the project by the people in order to enable the infrastructure last longer for their use. Good community, well organized. So you should also be going into maintenance of uh, yes. issues like this. Yeah. Where, when your lights, are, when your, your box are bad, mm. you, you find a way to fix them. This is the ever busy Shell location Eleme Link Road, Eleme Wont Road in Obiakpo local government area. The road was next in line for inspection by the NDDC team. Here, the quality of asphalt laid on the road and the structural integrity of the concrete drains were put to the test using the asphalt and concrete coring and the structural testing machines. The test results came out positive and it showed that work carried out on this road by the contractor met the approved NDDC specifications and standards. Dr. Ojubo noted that the Office of the Executive Director Projects has been moved to this field to adequately supervise all NDDC projects. We have removed the Office of Executive Director Project from the cozy air-conditioned offices of the headquarters to the field. And that is the way it should be. Now contractors know that uh, they have to behave themselves. And, uh, Henceforth, the IMC would like to leave a legacy that the next coming EDP who will take over from me will not remain in the office so that you can supervise what is being done by these contractors. A lot of them now are fidgeting, but we are determined to make sure that every money we pay to the contractor has value for the money. The quality of job done on the Shell location Element Link Road, Elenewan Road, by the contractor was commended even as the road now serves as a major bypass for vehicles who can no longer ply the Abba Express Road due to ongoing construction going on there. From the test we've carried out, the, the test of the concrete, uh, the concrete, the concrete test, the, uh, the uh, strength of the concrete, we found out that the contractor did something that was, uh, or that is quite uh, uh, commendable. And even the uh, thickness of the asphalt is also commendable. My personal and uh, technical assessment of this road is that uh, the job has been executed according to scope and standards. In Rumi Ibekwe community, also in Obiakpo local government area, the technical team visited Chibuzo Close, Park Crescent, Elder Emmanuel Avenue to ascertain the quality of work being carried out on these roads to see if they met the required specifications. The roads were subjected to the coring and structural test and failed the tests. This is, this is the result of the coring test. You can see that it has failed the test. This is, uh, this is just about, uh, le about slightly less than by one, 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 one inch. Another road that failed the asphalt and structural tests conducted by the NDDC technical team is the Azuabie Community Road, also in Ubiakpo local government area. The team observed that the asphalt laid on the road did not meet the approved and required specifications. Ogbogoro Internal Road was next on the EDP and his technical team's tour. The team inspected the farm road, 
the market road, sections of the internal roads and submitted that the contractor should be ordered to come back to site and do a proper job, especially on the surface of the market road. Still in River State, this time in Ubima in Ikwere local government area, the Road 1, Phase 3 and Coca-Cola roads were inspected by the technical team to ascertain the quality of work done on them to know if the projects qualified to be recommended for payment. And just like it had been thorough with its inspections, the team observed that the roads and drains here were poorly constructed and were already failing at several points. The executive director projects, Dr. Cairo Ojubo, who was visibly angry, noted that it was a total lack of sincerity for this road to have been presented for inspection and payment by the contractor. He ordered the contractor to go back to site and do a thorough job. Of course, the contractor must come back because uh, I, I, I have not seen anything he has done here. This uh, this new job here. Well, sorry to say so. They want to encourage them, but that does not mean that uh, we should uh, condone uh, uh, quality work. In fact, this is indiscipline to prevent to present this for payment. And now we're in Imo State. Here, the inspection team made a stop at Ikeruduru local government area where inspected the Umwobula Imiri in the Oji Umodumoku Road. This road is about 2.47 kilometers long and has about 3 kilometers length of drains. Although the road was said to have been fully completed by the contractor, the NDDC team observed that it had failed in some sections and directed that the contractor should return to site and correct the situation. The contractor promised to go back to site and remedy the observed anomalies. So those who have done a proper job don't have anything to worry about. The EDP assures that those who have done what they're supposed to do, meeting up to the standards of the NDDC, will be paid. Now you've seen that in today, the NDDC is concerned about the COVID-19 and also about the quality of projects across the Niger Delta. As always, we'll be here to keep you informed as to what is happening. Meanwhile, stay safe, do all the things you're supposed to do. The COVID is not so much prevalent in the Niger Delta yet. Let's keep it out. We'll see you same time next week. Bye.